everybody, it's Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel. I'm really excited about today's washcloth of the month washcloth. And what we've done this year is each month we've done a different washcloth pattern together in our washcloth of the month crochet along. This is our 11th washcloth and it is the peppermint washcloth. It looks complicated but it's really quite easy. And don't you worry, I'll walk you through every single step. Now this washcloth measures about nine inches across and is a nice size washcloth. I think it would also look pretty as a decoration or maybe just put a bowl of candy in the center with some peppermints in it. That would look really nice too. Now, if you want all of the washcloths that we've done this year, I'll put that link for the playlist right up there and you can click that and that will take you to the playlist with all the patterns on it. I'll also put the page link with all the patterns on it down in the notes underneath this video. That way you can have all the patterns and try them all. To make the peppermint washcloth, you're going to need about an ounce of two different colors of cotton yarn. I made mine out of cotton because they are, of course, washcloths. If you want to use an acrylic, and because you're going to use it as a decoration or maybe just a doily, an acrylic medium weight number four yarn will work as well. I'm just using your basic peaches and cream, cotton in red and white, and these were the same thing, just green and white and red and white. I like doing my washcloths in cotton. And you know, some people like acrylic, so you do what you prefer. Just make sure it's one ounce of two different colors of medium weight number four yarn. We're going to be stitching with our H hook today, 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a needle just for weaving in those ends. And of course, you'll need a pair of scissors. To begin, we're going to start with our slip knot and we're going to chain five chains. One, two, three, four, and five. We're going to join this chain five into a circle. So we'll put the tail of yarn over our hook and pull it through that loop. And then we'll just snug that down and tie that stay knot. We're going to go in this chain five, pull up a loop and chain three. The chain three counts as one double crochet and I'm going to stitch 11 more so I have a total of 12. And I will be stitching over this tail of yarn. Yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over and go through the second two. So there's two. That's six. Ten, eleven, and twelve. All right, let's go ahead and Make sure we have 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. All right, I'm going to join to the chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull that string, close up that hole in the center, and just grab my needle and go ahead and weave that in just to get it out of the way while we're working. All right, we'll take care of it later. And so for row one, we have 12 double crochets. We join to the chain three and chain three. For row two, we're going to be stitching two double crochets in each of our stitches around, and we're going to be changing colors every two stitches. Our chain three counts as our first double crochet, 
So we'll begin our next double crochet in the same stitch. And then we'll grab our white yarn and finish our second double crochet. And this is very important that you finish your second double crochet of each of your two with your next color or you end up with a loop the wrong color. All right, so now we'll stitch two double crochets in the next stitch. We do one in our next color and then we'll begin the next one and finish it with our previous color. And this is the way that row two will work. We're still stitching two double crochets in each. We're changing colors every two colors and finishing that second double crochet with the next color. And this is very important to finish that double crochet with that next color so you have two complete double crochets of each color. If you don't do that, you end up with a loop. This would be a red loop, this would be a white loop, and they would not be two complete double crochets and it wouldn't be a nice crisp stitch. All right, so for row two, we're stitching two double crochets in each of those 12 double crochets around and finishing that second double crochet of each of those groups with the next color. So we do our first <clears throat> double crochet regular and then we start our next double crochet and finish it with the next color. Now we do not cut our yarns we're trailing them across and stitching over them so we have a nice and neat appearance as well. All right, so we'll continue around stitching those two double crochets in each color and join back to our chain three. I've completed row two, alternating two double crochets all the way around and I have 24 double crochets or 12 in each color. I finished off my last set with my next color. I'm going to join to the chain three with a slip stitch and then I'm going to slip stitch in the next stitch and chain three. This chain three counts as one double crochet. Now I'm going to stitch two double crochets in the next stitch, but I'm going to finish off my second double crochet with my next color. One double crochet in the next stitch, two double crochets in the next, and finishing off that second one with my next color. And repeat. One double crochet in the next and two in the next. Finishing off the second one with my next color. And we'll repeat this all the way around for row three. One double crochet in the next, two in the next, finishing it off with your next color. You'll have three double crochets in your groups and you'll repeat this all the way around. and make sure you stitch over those trailing yarns so you don't have any that are sticking out 
the back. I've completed row three almost. I have to stitch those last two double crochets. And when you get around, you're going to stitch those last two in that slip stitch. So there's one and two. So we're going to finish it with our red. We're going to join to our chain three. Then we'll slip stitch in the top of the next double crochet, that string out of the way there, and chain three. And for row three, you have one and two, changing colors every three stitches. And if you look at it, you can see that it's already giving the appearance that it's starting to spiral. All right, let's do row four. Our chain three counts is our first. We're going to double crochet in the next. And then we're going to stitch two double crochets in the next one and then double crochet, finishing it with our next color. And repeat, one double crochet in the next two one, two, and then two double crochets in the next, finishing that second double crochet with our next color. And repeat, one double crochet in the next two, two double crochets in the next, finishing off that second one with our next color. And this is our repeat around for row four. One double crochet in the next two, two double crochets in the next, finishing off that second one with our next color. And you'll have groups of four double crochet in each of your colors around. Repeat all the way around and we'll join back the same way we did for row three in that slip stitch. I've completed row four. Here's my last four stitches. We have one double crochet in the next two and then two in the next. I changed to my red when I finished my last double crochet. We're going to slip stitch. To join. And then slip stitch in the next stitch and chain three, <laughs> that white string out of the way there. One, two, three. And that's the way row four should look. See how it's starting to spiral? I just love that. All right, now for row five, our chain three counts is our first. We're going to double crochet in the next two. One, two. And then we're going to stitch those two double crochets in the next Finishing that second one with our next color. And this is the way that row five will work. One double crochet in the next three. One, two, three. Because our chain three counted as one here, we did two more. And then now we're going to do two double crochets in the next, finishing off that second one with our next color. One double crochet in the next three. One, two, three. And two double crochets in the next. Finishing off that last one with our next color. Oops, 
<laughs> and this is the way that row five will look. You can see I have a knot here. Um, one thing I wanted to tell you is when you're working with a project like this where you're changing colors a lot, you might end up with some twist. This really isn't a knot, it's just twist. And so what you'll probably want to do, probably after every row, is untwist your work. Sometimes it's easier if you're working with small balls to untwist the yarn that way. Sometimes I just take it and flip it around like this to undo the twists because the twists can be very frustrating when you're working back and forth with a lot of color changes. All right, just wanted to pop that in there so you don't get frustrated. And so what we're going to do for row five is we're gonna to continue to repeat one double crochet in the next three and two double crochets in the next finishing that second double crochet with our next color and we'll repeat all the way around and finish off the same way we did for row four I've completed row five, three double crochets in the next, two in the next, finishing off with the next color. And then I join to my chain three. I'm going to slip stitch. <laughs> there we go. In the next stitch and chain three. There we go. One, two, three. And now for row six, it's pretty much similar to row five. We just have one more double crochet. So we'll double crochet in the next three. Since our chain three counts as one, and we're going to double crochet in the next three, <clears throat> that will give us four double crochets. Then we'll double crochet in the next stitch two times and finish off that second double crochet with our next color. And so this is the way that row six will work. One double crochet in the next four. One, two, three, Four, and then two double crochets in the next, finishing off that second double crochet with the next color. And of course, we're going to repeat this all the way around. One double crochet in the next four. two double crochets in the next and finishing off that second double crochet with our next color. And we'll repeat this all the way around just like we did on our previous row. I've completed row six. We did one double crochet in the next four, two in the next. We finished off with red, joined to our chain three, and now we're going to slip stitch in the next stitch. We're gonna get that out of the way there and chain three. And again, our chain three counts as one double crochet. And this is our last row of double crochets. We're going to double crochet in the next four stitches our chain three counted as one, and so we'll have five double crochets. There we go. And then in the next stitch, we'll stitch two double crochets. And again, we're going to finish off with our next color. All right, out of the way there. 
one double crochet in the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, and five. And then two stitches in the next. And again, finishing off that second double crochet with our next color. So row seven is basically the same as row six. You're just going to have five double crochets and then two instead of four and two. And we'll repeat this all the way around and then we'll join back and do that fun trim. I completed row seven. You have one, two, three, four, five double crochets and then two double crochets in the next and repeat changing colors. Remember to finish off with the next color. Isn't that gorgeous how that spins around? All right, so we join to our chain three and we're going to chain three. And now I'm going to show you how to do that fun little peppermint trim. We chained three and we're going to let that sit for a second. We're going to go in the next stitch and pull up our white yarn and chain three. One, two, three. Now we're going to push the white one to the back. Put our hook back in our red one. Slip stitch in the next stitch and chain three. One, two, three. Now we'll take our hook out, we'll push the red one to the back, grab that white one, cross across the front, and slip stitch in the next stitch, and chain three. All right, now we'll push the white one to the back, grab that red one, slip stitch in the next stitch, and chain three. And see how that's working? <clears throat> we'll push it to the back, grab the next one, slip stitch in the next stitch, and chain. Oops, get in there. There we go. Two, three, and chain three. And this is the way the trim on our washcloth works. Slip stitch in the next stitch chain three, push that one to the back, grab the previous one, and slip stitch in the next, and chain three. And see how that's making that fun little trim? <clears throat> we'll continue to repeat this all the way around, and this will give us a fun trim for our peppermint washcloth. Once you've done your trim all the way around, you'll tie off and you'll thread that onto your needle and then you'll just bring it to the back and make sure everything's laying nice and pretty around that edge. I've already tied off the red one, here's the white one. And you just want to make sure everything's laying nice and pretty. And be careful not to let the white show through on the red and the red show through on the white. So here is our peppermint washcloth. You can make it in peppermint or spearmint <laughs> or any colors that you want to. They're really a lot of fun to make. And I love the way they spiral around just like a real peppermint or spearmint candy.